I am so honored uh, here to have the One Day at a Time gang. First up, Gloria Calderon Kellett, uh, the executive producer and uh, showrunner and does so much on this show. Welcome, Gloria. Thank you. And the legendary Oscar, Tony, Emmy, Grammy, everything winning uh, star, Rita Moreno. <laughs> Hi, Rita. Can you hear me? Yes. And yes, and uh, need I say more than uh, the man behind this show and so many others, a legend, no question about it, Norman Lear, right here. Hi, Norman. Okay. <laughs> I speak for a lot of people, and it was very clear when I say, I am so happy to be sitting here talking to you about the fourth season of One Day at a Time, because uh, when it was canceled by Netflix after three years, there was an outcry, a genuine outcry, and you don't often see that in television, where it successfully is able to be brought back, and the fans uh, win here. And there's a reason for that. And before we get started, I'm going to show you a good reason. We've got a clip from the show here we're going to show you, and then we'll uh, talk about it. So here is One Day at a Time. Because masturbation is a healthy, normal part of life. No, it is not. It is a dirty, sinful habit for sad, <laughs> ugly people. <laughs> Lord, living, beautiful angels. It wasn't me, it was her. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sosia. Did you learn that in the army? Because no one in our family has ever done that. <laughs> Mommy, please. Stop with the old school prudishness. It's natural. Maybe for men, because they are animals cannot help themselves. <laughs> but women, women are civilized. We are mothers. We do not put the hand that wipes the tears of our child down the front of our bloomings. <laughs> what you guys talking about? <laughs> the completely normal act of female self-pleasure. Oh, can I tag in? <laughs> can I tag out? No, 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 no. I have been reading a lot about this. Please, I don't need more information. <laughs> but no, there are real health benefits from self-gratification, particularly for women, like reduced stress and pain relief from menstrual cramps and improved cognition. Que tonteria. <laughs> Sex is between people who are married. It is Adam and Eve, not Bzzz and Eve. That's great. I wanted to see more. I wanted to see the character going. Such a funny show and so important too. Uh, Norman, let me ask you, you know, about bringing this show back so successfully for a new generation, putting it in with a Cuban American family and watching it have such resonance once again here, talking about important issues, but being just as funny as it was uh, in 1975 when you started it. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how great this was for you to be able to do this show again? Well, it's, it's, it's perfectly wonderful, of course, to be able to, but we're not doing it again. What Gloria and Mike are doing is an entirely different show. It happens to be a family. It happens to be made up. Well, it isn't made up the way the other family was because we didn't have a grandmother. Rita's role wasn't in the original. And uh, it was two daughters, not a daughter and a son. Uh, and it was uh, not a, uh, a Latino show. It was not Hispanic. It was not a Cuban family. So this is a and and there isn't a word from an earlier script in this. This is all what Gloria and Mike have uh, conceived, and I think it's brilliant. I love the other show. I'm not comparing them, but this is an this is its own uh, its own thing. Yeah, Gloria, for you uh, and able to work with Norman and to bring this back to television in a whole new way, as he says. I mean, it must have been a dream job. It must be continuing to be that now that we're in the fourth season. It is. It's a dream come true. The fact that I get to work with Norman and Rita, two people I've looked up to literally my whole life, 
is unbelievable. Uh, I really pinch myself all the time. Uh, you know, Norman is, is so modest, but he really laid the recipe out for this show. We're doing a new thing. It's new ingredients, but the recipe, the, the, the framework of what he put into the world uh, with his shows is, is where it, we wouldn't exist without it. I think if Mike and I had gone in and pitched, hey, we want to do a show about a Cuban-American family, and sometimes we're going to talk about issues, and sometimes we're going to cry, but it's a comedy. I just think people would have known what to make of that. But the moment you say Northern here, they say, oh, I understand. Because he literally invented that. And so we are so grateful that that Norman um, blessed us with, with his, you know, his seal of approval. We, you know, we all walk in on the shoulders of others. So the people who preceded us. So there I was, and you. But what you're doing is all together. You love right. us, Pete. You can see it. And Nobody enjoys it more than and, and then what Rita does, you know, I was just sharing with Pete before you came on, Rita, that this past weekend we we had a, a musical marathon where we watched uh, "Singing in the Rain," "King and I," and "West Side Story," <gasps> of which we are in all of them, and brilliant and wonderful. And here she is now being br just as brilliant and wonderful. I mean, who has had a career like who can do what she does in a way that is hilarious and also so real, so grounded. She's not a cartoon. She's a real character. She's a real person. And no one could do that but Rita. That, uh, no one could do that. Well, there is only one Rita Moreno. That's right. That, that's right. Rita, tell, tell us how you do it. How do you, how do, you do it, Rita? And I speak. <laughs> and yeah. I'm glad you brought that up for one reason only. And it's because you and Mike and, of course, Norman, to begin with, are the people who gave me the opportunity to be this character. I didn't get to do this in the movies. What I did in the movies sometimes was wonderful. Very often was Indian maidens who could barely speak English, that kind of thing. So what I've gotten to do in this particular situation, comedy, is completely different. I never got to be funny. I love being funny, obviously. Uh, She's so funny. But, She's so funny. But, but so I don't hear a word she says. Well, she said that she never got a chance before in her career to be funny. Uh, but I disagree with that because I've seen you funny and other things, but not like this. This is so great. And Norman, she's thanking you this opportunity to do something she wasn't able to do in her career. Right. Oh, I love I, I love that. <laughs> and she's perfectly wonderful. I wish to God I could hear her today. <laughs> they will at home uh, uh, when when they see contenders. You know, right from the first episode, even from that clip, you see how current this show is in, in dealing with different things and talking about it freely on television. The first episode dealt with the census taking. We're in the middle of an election year here. That's a key thing. Ray Romano, very good in the show, played that. and uh, And you're tackling issues right and left, but how important in an election year do you think this show is, we, uh, Gloria? We think this show is important every year because the Latino representation on television is minimal. We are almost 20% of this population and we are three to 6% of what you see in media and still wildly stereotyped roles. That you know, Rita has been a trailblazer for her entire career and even she has not been able to play the, the girth of what we know ourselves to be. So to have shows like this that show us in our totality, this is an immigrant family. This is a funny, warm, hardworking American family that happens to be Cuban. And they're just talking about the things they care about, the people that they love and doing so in a funny way with that Norman Lear style. And it's just a blessing to get to keep making it for our fans. We just love it. Yeah, let me ask you a question about the title, which was in 1975 and is now. And I think in the reason we're here talking like this now, we're all taking it one day at a time. This is a, you know, an unknown world we're in now. And, and this show is helping people through it. So when you think about that title, what do you think, Norman? One day at a time, it really has resonance right now. Well, at the, at the time with the original, uh, it was the very first time there 
a woman living alone and mothering two children. And there was a big fight to get it on the air because the networks didn't want to see a divorced woman. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot of talk about whether it would be better if the husband was dead or divorced. Or, uh, but it was a fight to get it on the air just because they didn't want to see a woman alone uh, raising two children. Uh, so the first thing we had, the first hurdle we had to uh, uh, get over was uh, was getting it on the air in that in, in that with that composition, a mother and two kids, no man in the house. How many times have you heard in the last few months about taking it one day at a time from the American public? How many times have you heard that phrase? Every time I hear it. <laughs> I think of our show and I think of what that means. Thank you so much, all of you, Norman Lear, Gloria Calderon-Kellett, and Rita Moreno for joining us today on The Contenders.